Hello? It's me. Kind of in a, a weird mood today. <laughs> Mostly just like extremely annoyed. I refuse to elaborate. Let's just get started, I guess. A uh, hello, hello. Hello, Nero. Um, I had... I was thinking about not streaming. I wasn't really in the best of moods. <laughs> I blame work. To avoid going on a rant, I was, uh... I don't know, I'm in a... Like a weirdly hostile work environment. It's, it's weird. It's weirdly hostile because, like, there's no one else to replace me. So, like, my boss or the team lead... Even, like, or... Let me re retract that. Even though there's no one else to replace me, the, the team lead is doing the, the thing I'm very familiar with, with people on this project, or with people on, like, projects like this. And he's just trying to, like, get me to say something wrong. I'm like, huh? And he's like, did you test this? Yes. Okay, because it's wrong. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> congrats, I guess. It's very annoying. I've been there, yeah. Like, I, I don't really get it, honestly. <laughs> but it is, it's like you're, you have to, you're like, um, you're walking on eggshells. Be very, very careful about every little thing I say. Or he's, he's just constantly looking for gotchas. He's like, oh, sorry. Your PR was actually garbage. He's like, eh, yeah, but like, it's not my fault you let it sit for th one month and now it's out of date. Anyways. All right, so what I do have is a model, a perfect sync model from someone named Callie from the Discord. There's the Alicia perfect sync thing. So I can test that out now. Oh, did I break something? Default runner. Eh, hold on. <laughs> this shouldn't. Ooh. Oh, okay. I did break something. Hold on. Hmm. Oh, it's because of this. It's because of this. Okay. Um. Let's put all this onto a branch. Okay. I see. I see. I see. I see. It's on the chopping block tonight. Yeah. So on the chopping block is perfect sync support. So pretty much all that's going to be doing is, um, like I already receive blend shape data from IFM. And I think VTube Studio also gives me blend shape data. So all I need to do is just blindly apply every single blend shape to the model. I think that works. Probably. We'll have to see how slow it is. If it's just exceptionally slow, I'll need to think of a, I don't know, maybe applying this on the receive thread instead. Uh, we'll figure it out, get check out. So let me put all these changes onto a branch. Refactor, extension, manager, or use Toml for extension manager. Sometimes it shows up as an X when I just hit run anyways, maybe. Well, I know why it's an X, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it shows up as an X because there's nothing loaded for it. So if something didn't load in properly, that's why it shows up as an X. Well, or if you, if you crashed, it'll show up as an X. Or if it's the first time you're running it, it'll show up as an X. Use Toml for extension manager. Manager, yeah. So git commit 
use Toml or start rewriting uh, extension manager parses stuff parses extensions push you origin refactor use Toml there we go all right which means now that we can just go back and check out master makes sense yep 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 but now that should not happen anymore because I have gone back to the main branch so we just go here we can load in load in a model from downloads what was it called hmm uh, <laughs> ignore this uh, this is my termination agreement for my last job. What is it called? Oh, Alicia Permanent Perfect Sync. Ooh, okay. It's loading. Okay, cool. So even with, oh uh, no, I gotta, IFM only works on iOS devices, so I gotta very carefully open up my iPad here. Alicia. Is it, wait, is it not called Alicia? Is it? Oh no. <laughs> I think I should put the model name here so I don't have to like remember what it's called. Actually, I should put it here, right? Alicia, yeah. Or is it Alicia or Alicia? Alicia? Like I, I pronounce it phonetically, but maybe it's not supposed to be pronounced phonetically. Nice, here we go. I facial mocap. All right, so we can get rid of all of these. I think this should be fine. So toggle. So this is not using perfect sync. This is just using whatever. Hair is kind of suspect, but whatever as well. I think it looks okay. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with my how I'm handling interpolation. That's something I do need to fix. Anyways, we will stop this close it does take forever to load in hold on i'll find it the uh, looks okay for proof of concept well well proof of concepts i mean it does work right <laughs> there's nothing else to prove the only thing is this So what I could do, what I could do is, we go to IFM, just open up twice because I have the spec listed up here. Yeah, so we have all of the blend shapes here. And then apply is actually run on the main thread. That's actually run on the main thread. Let me think. Hmm. We could do this model. <laughs> For key in blend. Well, oh, hold on. For key in IFM data blend shapes dot keys. And then we need to have the value. Okay. So what, what do I have on puppet traits then? What do we have on puppet traits? Da, da, da. We have all of these things. So blend shape stuff. Blend shapes are generally in skip from zero to one, sure. But then how am I handling VRM stuff? Because this is just apply bone names. Well, how about just VRM model? How am I how am I doing this? Okay, so there's no exposed interface for blend shapes. Um okay, so I need to do something so I can load in all of the blend shapes for a mesh. Okay. Map bones and eyes, no 
Picks additional bones, no. Hmm. Get blend shape weight. Mesh instance, get blend shape. Blend shape, hmm. Mesh instance, mesh instance. So geometry instance, do these have blend shapes on them? Hmm. Or where are the blend shapes stored? Hmm. This is a rhetorical question. I know where they're stored. They're just stored as properties, which is a bit weird. Because you can do it like this, where you just get this, or you can set blend shape to a value. Hmm. So is it stored on... Well, is it stored on the mesh? No. Well, maybe... Surface get blend shape arrays. Maybe I could pull all of the blend shapes from there. Returns the blend shape arrays for the <laughs> requested surface. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Okay, so let's let's do this again. Switching some things on here. Uh, go back. Perfect sync, sure. This one takes forever to load in, dude. I cannot believe it. And by forever, I mean it takes like half a second more than the regular Alicia, Alicia that I use. I'm, I'm switching my video, by the way. Okay. So, instead of doing some weird print statements, we can just query this at runtime. Um, really should try to make this look better, but I'm not going to. So there is your console. How cool. Um, so turn get tree root. So that's your viewport. Get children. Why am I doing it like this? I can just look here. So, get child. Can't take longer than when I load models. Three, it takes you three minutes to load a model. Hmm. Unfortunately, there's not really anything else I can do about that, honestly. Like, I could try to run these on a thread, but like, that just means that the, pro the application doesn't hang. <laughs> Because there are like a lot of materials, right? That have to be loaded in, and those can take a while depending on the complexity of the material. So let's get child zero, get child zero. So that's my viewports, and then get child two. I think that's get child two. Yeah, that's the spatial. And then this gives me get child zero. All right, he's done it. So then we do var is equal to this store var model a. Okay. I'll stop being an idiot. Viewer models have a lot of parts. They do have a lot of parts. They have a ridiculous amount of parts. Also, especially if you have a lot of individual like hair threads or hair bones, those can take a while to load in. All right, let's let's save this just in case I have to do this again. Because sometimes this kind of weird like debugger inside of a debugger can break. So it'd be a shame to have to write this out again. All right, so we can, yeah, there we go. There's our model. Look at that. This is also why I was a little doubtful about how easy this would be to port to Godot 4. I think there's a lot of things that are pretty easy to port to Godot 4, now that the beta's out. This debug console actually does ports fine. There, there was a few tricky things that had to be changed because now you, 
I mean, because how this works is that I'm compiling things at runtime, right? Or I'm parsing things at runtime. So it's, it's a bit weird. This is not native Godot functionality. I'm just kind of abusing the compiler. Uh, so we have our model. The model has various children associated with it. Get children. So that's our skeleton, and then we have our... Oh, actually, are things stored just on the skeleton? They are, okay. So get child. I'm assuming the face has the most things, so we'll just do this. Ah, uh, no. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Invalid input. What did I do? Oh, I forgot the this. Okay, that's your face. Our face is equal to this, and then we'll just store this. Store var face, and then assign face to it. Yeah, so that's the mesh instance. Is there a reason to upgrade the GD4? Not really, not at this time, other than just to have the latest and greatest tooling. But no, there isn't a great reason at this point in time. Like, it would it look better? I'm not sure, actually. Because we're, you know, this isn't even like a super big and complex scene, right? So. I think if you if you were to be rendering a bunch of other things in the scene, you had really fancy, fancy lighting that couldn't be baked in, maybe it, it might make sense. It's hard to say, honestly. I think like the, the biggest reason why I would want to upgrade to Godot 4 is just the better tooling, like the better GD script tooling. <laughs> <sighs> Because then you have lambdas, you have functions as first class objects, so you can pass them around, which is really nice. Uh, what am I looking for? Mesh. Am I allowed to do that? There's the array mesh, sure. Surface get arrays, or let's do get surface count. It has eight surfaces. Okay, sure. That's a lot of surfaces, actually. That's a that's a huge amount of surfaces. Eight surfaces for just the face. I think that means that there's eight materials. Uh, so what is it called? Surface get blend shape arrays. I don't know. Ooh, that's not the. Ooh. Oh no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We're, we're frozen. We're frozen. I had a feeling this is going to happen. I had a feeling. Too much running? I think there's just too much data. There's, there's way too much data. So it returns the blend shape arrays for the requested service. I don't think that's actually what I want, probably. All right, let's kill it. Clearly something broke. Hmm. How do I find the blend shapes on an array? That's That's the question here. Get blend, oh, get blend shape counts, okay. Why am I, why am I doing it? I'll, oh, because what I was looking at, it was giving me the, the vertex data. Uh, this is my theory anyways. It was giving me the vertex data for every single blend shape on the model and there are 52 times eight. So that's a lot of blend shapes. Or well, that's, that's a lot of vertices. Excuses, excuses. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's how it is sometimes. How are you, 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 59? Is that like a, a you, you, Hakusho? 
reference, or am I reading too much into it? Hmm. All right, so there's our model again. Yeah. How are you? How are you? Thank you for the follow, by the way. For you, 59. <laughs> for yous. Um, so let's see, model. I think it's get child, and that's a skeleton. Yep, and then we'll want to just get the face, which is the other child. There's your face. So we can do store var face model. Let's do it. Okay, fat fingered it. Oh yeah, there we go. Store var, there we go. Okay, so there's the face, and then that's a mesh instance, question mark. So on a mesh instance, we can get the the mesh. Wait, the mesh is an array mesh, yes. Which means that we can call get blend shape counts, yes. So face, turn face, get blend shape count, get blend shape. No, that's a, I had a blonde moment username. Mm. <laughs> how does a how does a blonde moment lead to you 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 you? Apologize, I'm not up to date on my blonde moments. It is good to know that blonde moments are still a thing, though. <laughs> Ooh, 117 blend shapes. Okay, all right, so mesh get blend shape name. Get blend shape name. So I don't know, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of them. Oh geez, okay, so let's write a function. So why am I blend shapes? Well, because this is a perfect sync model. So perfect sync implies that it like syncs perfectly with your face. So I mean, your face has a lot of like nuance to it. So if you want it, if you want like the ultra realistic stuff, you need to have many many blend shapes. Tried to trick no streamer to say you doing a word ban. I didn't. I had to wait two months to change user again. Well, have I got the idea for you? For I in. I was gonna say you can make me say anything, but that's not true. <laughs> Blend shape. Yeah. So instead, I'll just kind of leave that idea hanging and hope no one picks up on it. Uh, so it's Vroid on steroids. Yeah, basically. I mean, perfect sync. I think you have to pay for the converter, but it should just work on any model. I think. Not sure. I'm not even sure if this is a Vroid model. I really should check the bones. Yep, this is a Vroid model. Yeah. Because you, you can kind of tell if it's a Vroid model because it uses like the weird naming scheme. I think, maybe maybe that's slander. So you use Godot? I do use Godot. This is all written in Godot. I've written a lot of custom tooling. Uh, you can find all my, my patches here. Look at that. So uh, everything's under Virtual Puppet Project or my own accounts. So like the REPL that I'm using now with the debug console, this is under REPL GD. It's the only one of its kind, by the way. Um, don't let other people trick you. <laughs> this is VPupper, which is what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to add perfect sync support. And uh, I am using a custom build of Godot as well that adds a few more things. So the ability to load things at runtime. So in the editor, you're always able to load things at runtime, but in exported builds, like this one, you aren't. So I had to patch it back in. So for I and face, so we do a appends face dot mesh gets blend shape name I. And then we'll just look for it, I guess. Return A. Okay. Thank you, me, for not printing this out properly. 
Okay, hold on. Bring me this, give me this again. So we'll do JSON, JSON, print A, and then we'll, I don't know, give me one of these. There we go, it's beautiful. Oh my god, <laughs> there's so many. This might actually be kind of difficult because I need to figure out. Are these are these actually perfect sync? I don't know. Awesome, currently I learn GDScript. Move on would be awesome to check others to learn more. Mm. GDScript is pretty easy if you're familiar with Python. This is like a very constrained version of Python. I think. What the heck is this? Um, Godot four has. Cat mouth. <laughs> Godot 4 has better uh, GD script support. Or I guess it's more Python like, which is nice. Hmm. So I think what I have to do here, based off of this, is I need to go through every single mesh. I need to go through every single mesh in the, the tree. So if we go look at the scene tree here. Yeah, usually for VRM models, the meshes are just kind of a flat, you know, you have your root node, you have your skeleton, and under your skeleton, you have every single mesh just kind of hanging out. So you don't have meshes that contain more meshes, which is good. Which means that I just need to go through the skeleton, go through every single child, and then just do this, which is... Fairly easy, uh, well, easy enough. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but, and then we need to store that somewhere on the model. I'm so, so with Python, I haven't done anything for a while now. Mm, well, hopefully it's pretty easy to pick up, I think. Um, Cause at least with Godot, you can see things happen in real time. I suppose you could do the same thing with Python, but Python you need to like actually hook into a graphics library if you want to actually think, see things change, which is why I like working with Godot, right? It's You see your changes, or you, you make a change and you can see it actually happen. You don't need to learn how to like, you know, first learn how to render everything and then you can start actually learning the language, right? Okay. Anyways, I think this will work. Send me. All right, well, that's fine. This, this breaks sometimes <laughs> because of the REPL, because the REPL uses up a ton of memory. Okay, so... Did I convert your spare longboard into a snowboard? Are you able to do that? Aren't some... How is that possible? <laughs> like... Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't your longboard just kind of dig into the snow because it's not angled at the one of the sides? Python is pretty easy to pick up. This is true. I learned Python from Code Academy. I don't. I haven't done Code Academy in a, for a while, but I mean, it was, it was pretty nice when I used it. Okay, let me see. We can do this. So additional bones. Most of this stuff is pretty weird. It needs another refactoring pass, in my opinion. But whatever. Let's custom update false var blend shape blend shape mapping. So I need to do have this. So this is going to be type. So this will be <laughs> another base. Never use Pygame, only console stuff. Console stuff is pretty easy. Not so bad. I think the the first game I ever made was in Python, and it was like Battleship in the console. So you, every single turn, it would just redraw the entire board, which is fine, right? Because it's Battleship. You just kind of guess a specific grid. And then it was like two-player Battleship <laughs> somehow. If only because like you didn't get to choose your own like ship's positions, it was just randomly generated for you. Taking the trucks off and has a lip on the tail for tricks. You can use to keep the nose above the powder. Okay. Um, I'm very bad at snow sports, if only because I live in 
the American Southeast. So there's not too much snow around me. I've been skiing once, and I gotta tell you, the day after I went skiing for the first time ever, my like I could not move. Legitimately, I had to ask somebody to like, like pick me up. Like I cannot sit up in bed. <laughs> I was uh, one of my housemates. I was like, I need help. I've fallen. I've I've woken up and I can't get up. My my entire body was so sore. Good times, good times. So this is a dictionary of strings of arrays of dictionaries. No, arrays of strings. I think. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I think. So it needs to be a dictionary of strings of arrays containing strings. I guess the number was my first one. I guess the number is pretty good as well. I guess the number is pretty good. Because you need to, well, assuming that you randomize the number, I mean, that's, you know, you have to pull an additional library just to randomize it. And, you know, I, I always forget how randomize works as well. So that's not so bad. All right, so this is puppet traits up, set up for I and skeleton whatever. And then what you need to do here is for child in skelly man get children then we are doing this for hmm hold on for i in face dot mesh so this is for i in child dot mesh because that's not, not nah, hold on if not child is mesh instance continue, but that should be a, an error. Hometown is on the highway through hell. What's highway through hell? Is that, I don't know. <laughs> is that, does that have something to do with Hell's Angels or whatever? The, the renowned Canadian biker gang that may or may not be gun runners and or drug distributors. So for snow in the front yard is around 11 feet. I think the most snow we've ever had here, three inches. And that shut down the city for, yeah, that shut down everything for a week. Because <laughs> you don't have the infrastructure for it, right? Got blend shape count. Mm, what did I call it? Blend shape mappings. Blend shape mapping. So this is child name. Wait, no. Var. Hmm. Shape names are these. So shape names appends child mesh gets blend shape name I. Something like that. Put random int from random. Yeah, then x is random int 0 to 100. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's pretty much how Godot works. So you don't need to import anything. Everything is just kind of in global scope, which is one of the downsides to GD script, honestly. Like, but it is meant to just be used as a very, very simple scripting language. And my mind is laggy at the moment. I'm, I'm in the process of making my mind laggy it's it's one of those weird things that, like i put around 12 hours a week into this project which isn't honestly honestly compared to other people who work on stuff like this is almost nothing but like also out of those 12 hours what's um like eight of those hours are me just being possibly in various states of intoxication As I very quickly pass the Balmer Peak, if it, as it were. Through hell has nothing to do with the gang. It's notorious for snow and ice. Oh, is that where the? I don't know. If, maybe this is a U.S. only thing, but like the the ice road truckers thing. Is that? No, wait, no. Ice road truckers takes place in Alaska. <laughs> Never mind. Not in Canada. How much number average? Hmm. 
BC, Trans Canada, Canada Highway. Okay. Good to know. My, my Canadian knowledge is based almost entirely off of one streamer. <laughs> Don't know too much about Canada past that. I used to know the, you know, but because of high school, we had to memorize all of the the state's capitals and then all of the, the provinces in Canada and all their capitals. So I, I used to know. I used to know. I don't know anymore. Canada's, but a place inside of I don't know. Well, you know, BC... British Columbia is on the left side, and above that, you have Yukon, Northern Territories, none of us, and then I guess from BC to eastward, that's BC, uh, Manitoba, Alberta, wait, Ontario? No, I, I think I got the I got the order wrong. I think. Yukon is a territory. Well, isn't isn't Yukon the the one in the top left? Or is is it not classified as a province? Is it it's classified as a territory? Whatever. Right? Like it just like Alaska has doesn't have counties. It has boroughs. Like who cares? <laughs> it's the same thing. Like economically, it's not the same thing, but it is the same thing. Let's not get too far up our butts about it. All right, this should work. Anyways, just enough talking about provinces. Ooh, nothing up there because it crashed. That's good. So let's load in this thing again. I'm not gonna set it as default because I don't want to trick myself into thinking it's the application is hanging. But yeah, isn't it? It's BC, Alberta, Manito on Manitoba, Ontario, Toronto, Nova Scotia, and then Brunswick and Newfoundland are above that. Oh, and there's Quebec somewhere in there. <laughs> Quebec, Quebec is next, is above uh, Ontario. Ontario is where Toronto is, right? Hold on. Canada. Hold on. Canada. How right was I, or how wrong was I? Where are the provinces? Give me, give me the provinces. Just absolutely useless. Provinces. Was I right? Yeah, there's Yukon. Or North, it's not Northwest Territories, sorry. Oh, did I say Northwest Territories was actually in the Northwest? So BC, Alberta, oh, Saskatchewan. I forgot about Saskatchewan. Ontario, Quebec, oh, Quebec is not up, actually above Ontario. <laughs> yeah, there's Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, missed that. New oh, Newfoundland and Labrador. What the heck is? Wait. Yeah, New Brunswick. Okay. I, I was kind of wrong. I, I, I don't really know too much about the East Coast, except that there's Nova Scotia, which is a pretty sick name. Forgot Saskatchewan. Toronto is... Well, yeah, Toronto is in Ontario. I know that. Toronto is the, one of the biggest cities of, in Canada. Like, the biggest cities in Canada, right, are uh, Vancouver. Uh, what's it called? Winnipeg and uh, Toronto, right? Or, those, or maybe those are just the most famous cities, I don't know. Nova Scotia is New Scotland. Mm. Mm. This is the last, yeah, it happens. Well, I mean, there's Quebec, right? I forget which the, what the biggest cities in Quebec are, but all I know is, like, from what I've heard is that you want to at least attempt speaking French in Quebec. Otherwise, they'll just ignore you. Winnipeg is small for a capital. Isn't, isn't Winnipeg, like, really, really big, though? Like, it's, it's out in the middle of nowhere. I actually had coworkers who had to fly out to Winnipeg way back in the day when consultants still had to travel for work. They're actually bringing that back, by the way. Uh, but like, of the four consultants that were sent there, 
like three of them got pneumonia because it was just so cold <laughs> and they were like an like there was nothing to eat there except for like extraordinarily fatty foods and i was like you know what that sounds like my kind of place i love eating garbage sadly blend shape mappings return blend shape mappings ah come on oh it's model sorry 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 okay so we have that and so we can then run this through a json print we'll just format it a little bit okay look at that oh geez actually all of these are just on the face okay this makes it really easy i think murder peg is small uh, six minus 60 plus wind chill that's crazy minus 60 is more or less minus 60 in fahrenheit <laughs> actually it might be that might be more than or fahrenheit might be even lower yeah because doesn't um the minus values sync up around negative 30 minus 30. Yeah, I've never I've never been to anywhere in Canada besides I've been to the Vancouver airports and we've I've been to the the Toronto uh, that one tower and then we had some poutine and it was delicious. Sink at forty? Nah, you know I was close. <laughs> I was close. It's 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 really cold. It's really cold. That's all I know. I think the, the coldest I've been in is negative 10. CN Tower, yeah. It was cloudy when I went though. But it was in the summer. Uh, I've been to the CN Tower, yes. I think the, we were there during a weekday though. Cause well, I went with my family and my family was like, where's all the Chinese food? Let's go to the Toronto Chinatown. And it was actually pretty clean. Apparently they've been there before. My parents have been to Toronto Chinatown before. We were walking through it and they were like, whoa. <laughs> it's not nearly as sketchy as before. I was like, there's nothing here though. Kind of looks like a, the outskirts of Detroit. All right, so this works. So then we just grab all of these blend shapes, run through the, yeah. Yeah, so then here, for key in these things, okay, here's the question is how do I, how do I map the IFM data blend shapes here to, oh no, I don't think these actually map at all. Now that I'm looking at it again, hold on. Do this one more time. I just wasted some time, but that's fine. Load it. Debug console. Send me. And then return JSON print module blend shape mappings. Just insert a small tab into here. Okay. So I need to map these back to this. Oh, geez. So do, do these map one to one? I think these FCL things are custom. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are the perfect sync ones. These are the perfect sync ones because there should be a brow inner up. Is there a brown inner up here? Brow outer up, okay. Because this brow thing, yeah, brow inner up. There we go. Can I, oh? all right. <laughs> Thanks for popping by, hopping and stopping by you, you, you four. 59, 4, 4U, 59, 4Us. So the coldest it can get in Canada during the winter is a record breaking minus 100. That's pretty cold. I have no idea what that would feel like, but I would, I would assume at that temperature, you can't really like go around with your eyes open because your eyes would freeze. But I don't know, you're, you're talking to somebody who lives in the American Southeast. I'm not used to coldness. So many names for perfect sync. Yeah, and actually, there's not. 
these aren't even taken into account. Yeah. And so, I think I would need to provide an interface. Yeah, yeah, because these don't map, these, this is not actually a valid VRM model, what the heck? Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they kind of are, kind of not, because these are supposed to be named a very specific thing, right? So Joy is a VRM blend shape. These are perfect, everything here is a perfect sync blend shape, but these are kinds of VRM blend shapes, but not really. I gotta think, <laughs> I gotta think. I gotta think. Um, um, for key and IFM blend shapes, keys. Well, I think I can just do a blind set. I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to just do a blind set. So we can do model or yeah for. I, I, okay, hold on. Is there, is there a way for me to figure out which one is the head bone? Is there a way for me to figure out which one is the head bone? Uh, head bone. Okay, so there's your head bone. So we can actually store that here head bone ID, so we can look for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Head bone, skeleton. Well, no, because that's the bone, it's not actually the mesh. That's not the mesh, I, I, I don't care about the bone, I care about the mesh. That's tough. It's surprisingly difficult. Because there's, there's no way for me to know which mesh contains, or which mesh is tagged as the head, because that's not how that works. I, I know which bone is tagged as the head. Hmm. Yeah, because a lot of this stuff is based off of um, bone data. All right, so let, let's, let's just do the, the most naive implementation possible then. So we'll just do for mesh in model skelly man get children and then we'll just hit it with a mesh set and i'm pretty sure this is how this works so we do key hold on that's not right Hmm. Actually, yeah, no, you know what? This might be right. Yeah, because these are string values to float values. So if we run this again, it's going to be slow, 100%. Almost certainly, unless my computer is just beefy enough to make this work through brute force. Which I would not be surprised about. So I facial mocap. Uh, okay. What I should have done as well. Oh no, we're starting. No, this is VTube Studio, get this out of here. It doesn't matter which one I'm running, but it, it, it does make me feel better about myself for running the... Um, I don't know. It doesn't appear to be working. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be working. Hold on. Hmm. Is this not how this works? Mesh set. Hmm. Oh no, I need to be doing this on blend shape. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Wait, no. 
model. No, because this is the mesh in no. Mesh instance sets. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I am doing this directly, right? Hmm. Modify blend shape. Is this not right? The unfortunate part is that I'm not able to set a breakpoint because there is a thread running when I do this entire thing. Which is why it's even able to, to maintain any semblance of performance. If I key in this, like I, this should be extraordinarily slow, right? Because there's three meshes, three meshes times 52. That's 150 actions pretty much as fast as possible. Every single frame. <laughs> so what, what's wrong with this? So this is mesh, mesh in. Model skeleton key. Maybe these don't exist. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. IFM blend shapes dot keys. Hmm. IFM. I mean, this is what they should look like. All right. Let's take this out. Oh. Let's let's take this out. I said. We'll just we'll just print IFM yeah, blend shapes. Something like that. Run me again. We'll just do this on the basic duck. IFM. And then Stop that. Print overflow, which is expected. No, yeah, these are right. Wait. Yeah, th these are right. Yeah. Or they're, they're correct, I should say. Yeah. Hmm. So these are the values I'm expecting, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I remember I had to go through these again. Okay. Hmm. So why is this not working? Why is this not working? So for key in IFM data blend shapes keys and then for mesh. And I so for every single mesh in the model skeleton. Why isn't this being applied? Let's let's okay. Let's do it like this. So model, model skeleton, get child. We'll just we'll just do this directly, just for debug purposes. So that's that's the. Oh, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. This is the mesh instance. That's why. And then the mesh instance has a mesh. Yeah, okay. I confused myself with my naming. That's right, that's right. Run me once again. Once more with feeling. Bring this back over here. We'll start tracking again using this big chonker of an iPad. Tracking eye facial mocap. Move this out of the way. No. Oh, am I run am I am I running into a bunch of errors? No. 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 It's it's very slow. I I can tell you right now that it's it's very slow. Look at that. Like usually when I change something yeah, usually when I when I like wiggle my eyes around, it's instantaneous. Here, I can actually I have enough time to look back and see the model try to catch up. So this is very very slow. <laughs> Luckily though, it's not it's not killing it. So it's one, it's not working, and two, it's very slow. 
If we went from being instantaneous to being too slow to matter. Is it your computer trying to run everything? Well, I mean, I told you, right? So there's 52 blend shapes, 52 blend shapes. And then there's three meshes. And then for every single mesh, I'm just running through it. I'm, I'm, so it's, it's three times 52, which is 156. So it's trying to do this 156 times 60 times a second, or actually more than 60 times a second. I, I think if I were to look at the, let me, let me try that again, just to see what the performance hit is. So if we go to the debugger, monitors, yeah, so we can we can keep an eye on the FPS. We can keep an eye on the, I guess this the process time. Actually, this is it's actually done in the physics process time, so that's probably better. Vertices drawn, <laughs> three hundred thousand vertices, which is a that's a lot of vertices. That's a that's a huge amount of late vertices actually. So we'll keep an eye on that, tracking. I think if I just turn this on, this will, we'll see a tank. Yeah. Well, no, that's not so bad actually. There was a, there was a little lag spike there, but who cares? So we're just gonna keep looking at this. I know it's what it's gonna look like, but when we go back to here, I don't know actually. Did the, is it the process time that changed? Like I know that you want process to be about at sixteen under 16 if possible, but that means that you're at least hitting 60 frames per second. So we're still at 60 frames per second. No? Wait, why is it so fast now? <laughs> why is it so fast now? What the, did I, did I change something? Yeah, what? Why is it so fast? I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, see now now I'm at the point where I it's it's hard for me to wiggle my eyes and then see the change. I can still kind of see it. But it's it's still not using the perfect sync blend shapes though. I'm confused. Uh, this is this is bringing flashbacks of when I first implemented Open Sea Face as a tracker. Because this is right. I know this is right. Hmm. I know this is right. But why is it so... Why was it so much slower that one time? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Because these are right. I know that. Because this is giving me, like, these values it's giving me are also correct. Right? Because it gives me values on a scale from 0 to 100, which means I need to convert them to a Godot scale, which is from 0 to 1, which is correct. I even left that as an explanation for myself. Um, and then under puppet trait, I mean, this is how I'm modifying blend shapes, right? Blend shapes should map directly back to whatever they are called on the model. Blend shapes are generally on a scale from zero to one, um, but you can actually set the blend shape to whatever value you want, which is somewhat amusing. You know what? Let me just see if I'm able to manipulate the blend shape. I'm just gonna make sure that's even possible to begin with. Takes a little bit. Debug console, paste, no. Uh, debug console, paste, boom. And then, <laughs> so model, skeleton, get child, zero. So yes, yeah, so that's your, 
your mesh instance. And so what we're looking for, well, we'll call it, we'll call it brow, brow, brow something. Brow, brow, inner, up. I don't, I don't know what that means, but we'll do set. Brow, inner, up. Zero. Please. Oh, did I not put this as a, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's a string. Nothing happened. Um, how about, nothing happened. Really? Is this not right? So that should be turn. That's the face, right? So set var face model skeleton get child. <sighs> set var. Or store var, sorry. Right, that's the face. Hmm. What were the other ones? The other ones were... Mouth smile, right? I, I, I don't know what that means. But sure, I'm pretty sure that exists. So face... Oh, I, did, I forgot to, to set it on the mesh again. Uh, all right, that's fine. Face, mesh, sets, brow, inner, up. Right, that was what it was called, brow, inner, up. So just set this to zero. So I, I would assume that this would be fine. And then when we set it to one, okay, that's not what I expected. Can I get this value then? Okay, so it's null, so it's it's a no op then. Okay. Um, <laughs> gets blend shape counts. Oh, sorry. Return. Okay. Get blend shape name. All right. Let's just pick a random value. Fung. <laughs> fun. Is it fun three like fungi, or is it like fun g three? That's a question. Bro. Okay. So we have this, which means. Shouldn't I be able to brow outer up left? I, I, I don't really know what that means, but how about 61? Brow outer, uh, okay. Eyes look up left. Uh, give me something that I know. Blink left, okay, we, I can work with this. Right, and that's a mesh. So that's uh, mesh. Uh, mesh. An array mesh. Add blend shape. Is there a set blend shape? No, right? Yeah, there's set blend shape name, but that's nothing I can really work with. Get blend shape counts, get blend shape name. No, set blend shape. Or is this on the surface? No, this is the surface. And then, right? No? Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, mesh. No, this is right. Mesh instance, mesh. Is it on the skin? No path, no skin. No. And this also has, interestingly, no documentation associated with it, which is uh, a huge pain. A lot, lots of these 3D things don't have any documentation, which is kind of tough. It's manageable. No. Mesh. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, nervous laughter intensifies. Um, <laughs> is that not what it is? Huh? So, okay, if we do face mesh 
get. I should be able to get I blink left, right? No. Huh? Wait, what? Shouldn't this... Oh, hold on. No, I need to access these in a very special way, I think. So, VRM model... Wait, no. Isn't VRM model does the same thing for the mouth shapes? Yeah, modify blend shape. And then the morphs, the morph is a very special kind of type of value here. Modify blend shape, custom update, no. Morph, no, because that's, that's how these are actually stored. Am I on, am I looking at the wrong thing? Hmm. Because I, I don't think that there's anything else, but I, if the blend shape exists, I should be able to... Okay, hold on. I forgot. Because the there's no thread running, I can actually do this. I can just look at it. Oh, never mind. I can't look at it. It just crashed. <laughs> uh, I forgot. I'm not able to... I'm not able to run the in-editor debugger and my own debugger at the same time. But now I can do it. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, so here... So skeleton, yeah. Oh, it's under blend shapes. It's under blend shapes. Uh. Is that new or does that mean, no, because open C face still works. Am I dumb? No, open sea face doesn't even do any of this. But then the mouth value... Modify blend shape. What does this do? How does it work? Maybe the morph stores it automatically? I don't, I don't remember. There's too many things to keep track of. I'm very confused. I, I, I'm honestly not really sure. Like this is mapping the the bones, which doesn't make any, what which doesn't matter. Do the morphs? No. I don't prepend anything to the morphs. I don't think. Right. Th these are just modifying the blend shape data, expression data. Get expression. So th that's the expression data. Right. For morph data and expression data, expression data. Yeah, add morph, animation name. Oh, you know what? There we go. The animation already has the, the fancy blend shape thing set in it. Okay, so we'll do it like this then. So it needs to be set or let me, let me check one more time. Let me check one more time. I'm sorry, there's, there's, there's so many moving parts. And then the VRM thing, it's 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 kind of weird actually because the, the way it was designed, it was meant to be used in an animation player, which is completely bonkers to me because I'm not sure how I would even set that up. Store, not store var, store face, store var face, which is model, skeleton, get child. Found it? Yeah, I think I found it. I think I found it. So the, the, the blend shape thing is already stored, is stored implicitly because of how VRM models are loaded in, which is tough. Uh, But now when I'm doing it manually like this, I need to poke it manually. So face, turn face, mesh, get. And I don't think I need to do any indexing. This is just blend shapes. 
what was it called? Brow inner up. Oh, should just do it like this. No. Is it is there a get indexed in Godot? Get indexed. Yeah, get not get indexed. Uh, isn't there a get indexed? Yeah, get indexed. Yeah. Probably this. <sighs> okay, um... Really? Is it like this? Uh, is it not even called blend shapes? Can I just get blend shapes? Nope. No? Eh? All right, before this crashes again. All right, kill that. Run me one more time. Run me one more time. So we'll look at this. Once it loads in, I'm just gonna take another peek at it. VRM runner. Click on this. So it's on the mesh instance. Blend shapes, yeah. And then we're looking for, I don't know, we'll just look for jaw open then. Blend shapes, jaw open. Yeah. Property. Yeah, this is the property. Oh wait, is this on, this is on the mesh instance, not on the mesh. <sighs> okay, okay. So we can only access the blend shape data. No. Really? One more time. So it has to be done on the mesh instance. That's fine. I don't care. But this needs to be set indexed. Blend shapes. Like that. But then here under debug, we'll do uh, no. Wait. Grab this. Store th that as a variable, and then store var face. That's the mesh instance model skeleton get child zero, and then return face get index. Blend shapes, jaw open. No, eh? Ooh. How about this one? Uh, uh, all right, what well, if we just look for blend shapes? Get. Huh? That's fine. That's fine. I, I gotta look at this one more time. There's something I'm missing here. There's something I'm missing. It's probably really obvious, but it might not be. So these are all the bones, yeah. These are all the bones, there's a lot of bones. Uh, no binds available here. Which is fine. We go to face. Blend shapes. There's your mesh. We don't care about the mesh. Blend shape mode on the mesh. But then we have your surface, which has a material. We don't care about the material at all. That should just work, I think. Yeah, there's an M2 shader on it, but software skinning, blend shapes. Yeah, and then if I do like literally anything, right? So if I start modifying these values in the editor, jot with, maybe that doesn't even make it a difference. Is anything changing? 
I think the mouth looks a bit different, but I'm not sure. I, I'm really not sure. Mouth pucker. Maybe these aren't even having an effect. Yeah, they're not having an effect. Okay, because I, these need to be sets. <sighs> now it shouldn't change till runtime. No, it, it should. It doesn't make a difference, right? It is runtime. No, th this is already runtime. I wonder if it's the name that's messed up. That's just breaking stuff silently. I don't know. Yeah, but it, it, it doesn't matter, right? I can, I can set these values to whatever I want because I'm actually directly modifying the mesh. This is almost directly equivalent to what I was trying to do, you know, using the UI. It doesn't matter. Uh, but tongue out, like... Oh, yeah, see, there we go. <laughs> Made a change and it just kind of worked. So if I click off, click back to it. Yeah. See, now the tongue is out. I don't really get it. Is there a mouth open? Or is it just mouth close? And the mouth close can... Oh, geez. Hate to see that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty terrifying. So the, yeah, these do work. There might be other... Why, why does this look like this? I, I don't like that. Yeah, see, now I'm able to manipulate it. That was weird. Maybe, maybe it's just the first time I wasn't able to, or maybe I was just modifying the wrong things. Oh, God. <laughs> um, it's uh, big uwu moments. Anyways, we'll, we'll keep this. Okay. Forgot. Forgot you're not allowed to do that. Good deal will nuke itself if you do that. Okay, so at least I know that these exist. That's good. Uh, now I need the rest of it. Oh, you know what? This will actually completely break. So, skeleton. Skeleton, get child, zero. And then that's actually going to be your face. Yeah. So that's your mesh instance. And then we can get, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. Return JSON print face, get property list. Okay, so there's a lot of things. Yeah, 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 see, there we go. And then I should be able to do this. I should be able to just grab this because this is a property on the thing. So tongue out, I know what this looks like for sure. So we do return face get that. Uh, sure. That's right. Um, hmm. And then maybe try with a get indexed. Get indexed. Hmm. How, how do I access this? Blend shapes. Okay. So since this is still a standard VRM model, I should be able to access the these morph values. Okay, so let's grab return. Well, bar model is equal to face get parent get parent store bar.
model, model, sure. That'll work. Okay, and then turn model blink left, I think. Yeah, so blink left has a morph on it. Yeah, that's the morph. Uh. And then there's it also has a mesh on it. Yeah, so then... Ooh. Return face, get... Right, and then these were just... Um, puppet trait. Yeah, these are just puppet trait things. So get blend shape weight. So this is the mesh instance with the blend shape. The blend shape is called this thing. So it's just the standard get, but I'm not able to get anything from there. Maybe I can just try to print it because it's not getting it properly for whatever reason. Or we'll convert it to a string, zero. Phenomenal. Actually, hold on. If you do it like, if you just do some garbage, what happens? What? <laughs> what? Why does this return as null? But when I turn it into a string, I get a real value, but then if I pass it a garbage value, it gives me null again. I'm confused. Okay, sure. That's I, I think I've been I've been lied to. Uh, but anyways, whatever. What was it called? Tongue out. Tongue out emoji. Uh, jaw. No. What was it called? The tongue out one was the easiest one to, to look at, which is why I'm going back to it. Don't make it weird. Uh, jaw open. Sure, we can do jaw open. That will work as well. Tongue out. That's fantastic. Give me tongue out. Yeah, so that's a zero. And then we can do... Oh, no, it, does, it doesn't matter what we do here. All right, that's fine. Whatever. Oh, it requires two arguments, so we can set this to just one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Why didn't this work last time? Maybe I was just changing the wrong thing that didn't have any effect on the model. And then we do change this to get. <sighs> okay, fine. Be difficult. Yeah, now that's one. All right. Fine, I don't really get it, but sure. Uh, kill this, go back to here, set index, it's just sets. I, gu I guess it doesn't matter, huh? Uh, run me again then, should be fine. I think I was right the first time, it just didn't work how I thought it would work. So. Run this again, tracking my facial mocap. I can tell you it's not working here. It is very fast. Hmm. So why isn't this working? This should be running through every single mesh instance and then setting blend shapes. Oh, it's setting it to a dictionary. That's right. Key. There we go. Don't don't launch. Launch it here. Yeah, so if you try to set it to a garbage value, I guess it just fails silently, which is annoying. Which is one of the <laughs> This is one of the, the few times where I'm like, man, I wish this was in C sharp. So at least I could get a real exception as opposed to just silently failing, which is very annoying. Oh no. 
<laughs> All right, yeah, it works. It's fast enough. The eyebrows are kind of freaking me out. Yeah, that's that's terrifying. It works. He's done it, I guess. I was just setting them the things on the wrong parameters. Then <laughs> the mouth can open larger than one. <laughs> this is not a sad face. I'm not making a sad face, but if I just do this, it makes it look like she's doing a sad face. Yeah, what I'm actually doing is like a hmm, like I'm, I'm surprised, but it makes it look like she's sad. Max height for the mouth. Yeah, I know what to do is just clamp it to, to one. I just need to clamp all this stuff to one. That's fine. Kill this. Go back to here. I think, where's the receiver? Hmm, 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 hmm. Or actually, I can just do it here. So clamp this value. So there's, this needs to be clamped to minus one to just regular one. And we can try this again. It's cool though, it's cool. It, it seems to work. It, it, it seems to be missing a few blend shapes, but that's fine. Or maybe they're just named differently on the model. Uh, but then that requires me to do some additional post-processing on the model to rename everything or allow you at least to rename things so they will work nicely. It's kind of hard to say. Nope. Uh, maybe you're just not allowed to go, like I, it, it's clamped now, right? Maybe I'm just able to dislocate my jaw <laughs> larger than what the, the mouth allows for. Yeah, I think it's missing a few blend shapes or maybe some blend shapes are not being tracked properly. Yeah, cuz I'm I'm raising it's it's not doing the rest of the eyebrow. It's only doing the the inner bits and bobs of it. So brow outer I think it's only doing brow inner up. All right, you know what? This time let's actually grab all the blend shapes on this model. That's not how that works. Da -da, and then we'll do da -da. Grab all of these, store these in this file. Okay. So we're looking at What was it? I still have the, the face set here. So face set blend shapes. It's called brow. Hmm. Brow. Brow outer. That's fine. No, it works. Uh, you can't really see it because of the hair. But if you do it on the right. Yeah. Hmm. So we're just missing some parameters. So this is called browder up, brow outer up right. Eh? This is not true. Is that not what I'm calling it? 
Oh, that's dumb. Okay, so this is this is actually named incorrectly. That's interesting. That's interesting. Which means I, I need to, <laughs> come on. I need to do post-processing because they're named slightly differently. Yeah. So this doesn't process properly because they're not, that's not how they're named. What I could do is run through every single blend shape and then just try and normalize them. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me though, but I, I could do that. Yeah. That's, that's tough, man. That's tough. That's tough. All right, jaw open. Is that not what it's called here? It is called jaw open. So jaw open, oh no, that's not good. Yeah, so jaw open, if you do this, then that's fine. But then if you do, I don't really know what the other stuff is. This mouth close. How does it sometimes get too big? Oh, that looks familiar. Maybe it's not actually clamping the value like I think it's going to clamp it. I don't know. Want to see something cool? Let's not, let's just put it to 10. Oh no. <laughs> There's the mesh turned into an eldritch horror. Okay. So that's, that's a bit weird. That's a bit weird. Let's ask, let's ask Kali if they're using the default values. So when you made the model, I'm doing it on this the Discord. So that's what, that just makes you do for checkups. Open wide. I do. I'm able to kind of dislocate my jaw. So not not to this extent, of course. That would be pretty weird. Uh, when you made the model, was there an option to rename blend shapes? IFM is sending, for example, IFM sends, let me see, but your model has something like that, right? So IFM is sending me brow utter outer up underscore right, but it looks like perfect sync is doing like brow outer up right. So they spell out to right. And I'm not really sure what to do about that. Maybe it'd be nice to have like a toggle. So like I, I what I could do is I could go through and rename everything. I, I guess that would work. Playing. Isn't too performance intensive. Playing. Perfect sync model. Look at that. Okay, keep that over here on the side. What I can do, what I can do for now, for now, well, no, because uh, 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 
I gotta think. I gotta think. There, there's a few things I need to do here. There's a, there's a few things I need to do here. One of them I know for sure is that Maybe maybe I should just have another one of these files. So you can import as several types of models. You can import as a regular VRM model. You could import as a perfect sync model. And then I can go through and rename all the blend shapes contained within it. Because if I want to rename the blend shapes, right, I can just do it here, I think, maybe. So I, I can process the blend shape name and then you know, if it ends in right or left, I can remap it to a perfect sync blend shape. But then in VRM model, that's where I'm a little bit more confused or a little bit more suspect. Well, I guess this is fine. Well, no, no, because I can't do that because this is what, well, uh, okay, what, what did perfect sync have? What did perfect sync have? Yeah, the, well, no, that's not really correct, but it's close. Or are these, are these mapped within the VRM model? Just a, just a horrible, <laughs> horrible last thing to, to open back up on. Hmm. So bring me back to the debug console. It's up here. We can grab all of the requisites information. And then, well, actually, and then the model is equal to base get parent parent store var model model so there's your model then on vrm model i think i do store the meta so yeah vrm meta is just stored on this so uh return json print model vrm meta so that's the metadata for all the vrm specific stuff very important yeah and then these are all the humanoid bone mappings yeah yeah which is fine yeah okay and then license name cc big whatever Blend shapes for Vroid face. Okay, let's take a look. Exporter version. Yeah, Uni VRM0, which is the, yeah. Blend shapes for Vroid face. Look here. I wish I could read Japanese. Vroid Studio Company. Uh, something. No, VRM. Demoru, what? Or mo modelu o people de uh something shita modelu des iPhone no uh yeah is a show biao watch toran toran kun Kin to toran tora tracking tracking something nung ni don't know sta blend shapes fifty two counts ko o ya bi o yo bi a play o yo bi she but what Shape. Shape. Shape or something they that something they must. Hon model wa pa 
パーフェクトシンクと say? <laughs> that Google Translate? Absolutely not. I'd rather butcher this entire sentence <laughs> rather than rely on the resin that is Google Translate. Anyways, I kind of get it. Yeah. 52 blend shape things. What are these? Oh, these are VRM models. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I can do this. 86. Thanks. We'll check them out.、Uh, regular VRM blenches, are really. Get those with IFM? Did I get implemented yet? Been implemented already as long as they okay still don't really speak. Okay, so I need to translate. Okay, so this, okay, sure. So this is what they use then. IFM needs to be translated because I guess everything else. <laughs> okay, sure, why not? We, we can pretend like this one's wrong. Or actually, you know what? I can pretend like they're wrong and then I have to do less processing on my side. You heard me. Well, you know, it's always nice to practice your, your Japanese as well. Always nice to practice your Japanese. Maybe. Hmm. So, okay, how do I do this? We can do. That's kind of tough. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the obvious part, or the obvious thing is just to replace like left with left, and then replace right with right, just so that we don't, you know, we, we, it, it's the same level of scuffness across the board. This is an English section below. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> How close is I? I was pretty close. <laughs> And with context clues, I could probably figure out the rest. Oh no, send me one more time. Presets, perfect sync. Start tracking here. I'm just gonna awkwardly look over to my side.、Oh、yeah, look at that. That's actually really. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's horrible. How do, I, how do I make the. I, I, I'm not really sure how to make my brows go in the other direction.、Uh, let me see. Tune into the stream. If you want to see it in action, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's working, though. Yeah. It's, it looks, this looks cursed. I, I really don't like that. That's not how a mouth looks. Yeah, that's not really how a mouth works. So think about, I guess. Oh, I have to think about the implementation. Something like that.
I'll modify IFM's blend shapes instead. Yeah. That's not so bad, though. It, do, it goes really easily to cat mouth, though, which is freaky. Right? Because if I do this, if I kind of pucker, a little big stream delay between Discord and Twitch, how, how, how long is the delay? Is it seven seconds? It should only be like three seconds between me talking to you and then you actually receiving any information. 12 seconds? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm on low latency mode. Like you're streaming? Yeah, I mean, I, I do send stream notifications in Discord, so. <laughs> Uh, did I not get the notification? I don't know. It's under it's under the stream notifications thing. So, uh, don't know, don't know. Uh, this is what it looks like. So I, I am holding like a big chonker iPad in front of my face right now. <laughs> the mouth is still kind of messed up. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. This is because I do have it clamped to zero to to between negative one and one. This is this is reminds me of like a like a whale shark. <laughs> the fact that it can go that circular is weird. I didn't have the roll now. I do. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So if I do this, wait, hold on. I do this. <laughs> no, when I do a genuine smile, that's the worst. <laughs> Because it goes into like a like a wide mouth shape, just like a U. Like this works. This looks good. Like ooh, I'm not. Oh, that I don't think the eyes have the ability to go cross-eyed because I'm actually handling handling those a bit differently. But you know, this is actually like pretty performance. Yeah, because. This is the actual, I can't see right now because the iPad's in front of my face. But what I'm doing is I'm going through every single blend shape piece. So IFM sends you 52 blend shapes. And then here I'm just looping through every single mesh. So that's 52 times three. And then I'm doing like a raw set as well, which is also very, very slow. So th this, even though this implementation really sucks, it's still not so bad. I, I, I can't see what I'm doing, by the way. So I'm just kind of, yeah, this should be fine. Bring me back. <laughs> it's just the mouth open that's really weird. Meow face and VC face made by perfect sync models. Mouth look weird. Does meow face work with B pupper? I thought, isn't meow face going away? I can tone down the amount of thing. It's open by editing the blend shapes. I think you can show all the blend shapes in the UI. You let the user change the amount of things open. No, it's actually kind of weird because I, right now, what I'm doing is I am clamping the shapes anyways. So this is this is currently what I'm doing. I'm, I'm sure I can come up with a better way of setting the blend shape data. But right now, like IFM sends me something with underscore L and I just replace the underscore L with left, underscore R with right. And then I clamp the value, because the value comes from, as a value from 0 to 100. So I two float it, divide by 100 to get a value from 0 to 1. Well, maybe not 0 to 1, actually. And then I clamp it to between negative 1 and 1. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can tone down the amount of things open by adding the one? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just this thing that looks weird to me. Yeah, meow face is going away. Yeah, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to, I guess, waste time. Unfortunately, on something that's going to be going away. Meow face uses the VTube Studio protocol, but VC face takes it as IFM. Hmm, the VTube Studio protocol, I need to figure out, because <laughs> I'm not, a I'm not able to connect to VTube Studio. I have tried it. There is some example code that just doesn't work. IFM is pretty easy though which is how I thought VTube Studio would work, but that's not the case. I guess it's because VTube Studio is free, well, whereas with IFM, I had to pay like five bucks for it, or five USD. 
But yeah. This is hard, by the way. I'm trying to, so you do like a happy, like this, like this is a mischievous look. And then this is the unhappy look. That's, that's tough. <laughs> that's tough. Can you test side smiling? What's side smiling like this? Are you ish? I don't, I don't really, what do you mean by shy smiling? I don't really know how to shy smile. This is where I have a dimple. Like if I, if this was like an actual mirror, you could see my dimple. I only have it on my right side though. What, what, what does, what does side smiling in, entail? I can do this. Like this. Like this. It looks better if I close my eyes. <laughs> kind of like that. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, okay. It kind of breaks when you do this. Hold on. I, like that. Yeah. When you're, when you're. You can kind of see the seams. Like this. Track from the side of your face, like this. If I just, okay, if I just move the, the iPad like this, off. Like this. Oh, look at that. You can actually see the mouth pucker as well. So if I, like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think if you look at the smile from the side, it looks a, more, a lot more natural. If you look at the smile from the front, it looks kind of cursed. Try tongue out like this. All right, so yeah, three tongue outs in three, two, one. It kind of just pu puckers my entire face, right? So we'll do the tongue out thing again. Three tongues, tongue outs in three, two, one. Oh, I lost my face. Three tongues out in three, two, one. It's not really getting it, I guess. But I think it's because IFM, like on my iPad, I can see that it's not actually picking up my tongue out very well either. Like it, it kind of works. I think if I like face the camera, it's a lot better. But I don't know. I, I, I just think IFM doesn't really pick up my tongue out very well. Because uh, on the, the, the preview tracking thing, it also doesn't pick it up. Yeah, it's, it's mostly just picking up as my mouth puckering. It's trying its best, yeah. I think this this looks pretty sick though. The fact that it's able to kind of yeah, that's that's actually pretty accurate to what my face is doing. Because I'm I'm also not able to wink. I don't know how to wink. So my my entire face kind of contorts. I guess if if I really think about it, I can do. Ugh. Ugh. But this is actually what it looks like: is wink, <laughs> scrunch the ins. Puffing up both cheeks, pouty face. Like like this. I don't really know how to do a pouty face. What does a pouty face look like? Like I, I know I know what it looks like in anime. How do I how do I make that with my face though? Like this. My, my stream preview is on my top monitor, so I'm trying to look at what you're seeing. But I'm also just looking at my regular monitor, but my iPad's in front of my face. Like this. What well, if I just, if I puff up both my cheeks like this, without making the pouty face, without making the angry face. Then it just looks like a normal face. <laughs> Seal your mouth and blow air into your mouth, creating a balloon effect. Oh, okay. No, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. I needed the explanation. Like that. That's actually, that's sick. That's really cool. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> something about like the like the surprise face pouting cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise face pouting cheeks. I, I, something's not right about that. <laughs> uh, it looks it looks natural. That's probably what I look like. Oh, but something about that that's not right right but because like my mouth is going to be closed this entire time starting now yeah that's not quite right i think there, there's maybe some blend shapes are conflicting with each other because it, it makes it look like i'm just like i'm like inhaling I'm not actually like opening my mouth though, but it, it kind of looks like she's like sucking in air to puff up her cheeks, which is not really how that works. As you might also expect, it's also impossible for me to talk while my mouth is closed. Te technically your lips don't disappear. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on there. Technically, your lips don't disappear. What does that mean? I don't really know. Oh, th yeah, this is this is a good example though. This is a good example. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll need to set the extents. Let me plug in my iPad also. It's like down to twenty percent because I've had it on for a while. It was playing some just. Garbage gacha games. Actually, it's not a garbage gacha game. Have you, you played like Counterside? That's a fun game. It's also like almost entirely auto only. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna download this. Let me run this through. Lips are just holding in on itself, creating a circular shape. Same as kissing your non-existent GF. Oof. Oof. <laughs> oof. Oof. I mean, it, you, not not false. But <laughs> why, why do you have to hurt me like this? It's been, it's been a little bit, been a little bit for sure. Actually, it's been more than a little bit. The last time I was in a relationship was, uh, yeah, third year of university, which was like 2016. <laughs> it's been six years. Um, okay. Oh, no. hit me with a virus total. I also did this with the other Alicia file. All right, well, that was pretty quick. I don't know if that's true or not. Let's load in something else. I even really like that. It seems too easy. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Uh, let's let's try this. This should be a dude, right? What was it called? Vroid male. So yeah, these always take a long time to load in. Oh, I recognize this. <laughs> isn't this isn't this like the default? This is the default. So eye facial mocap. I'll try this as well. Mouth open. Oh no, my drawing tablet uh, that I almost never use nowadays. Okay, yeah, the mouth open value is still super messed up. Yeah. Okay. I guess this, this is the reference. I like how the eyebrows can go over the eyes. <laughs> so there is, yeah, the mouth in this one looks a lot more natural. No offense. Can VRM models even contain viruses? They can actually. Uh, cause well, because you can, you can call it whatever you want, right? Uh, default model will change here. Yeah. So like, actually I can demonstrate if I go back to the one that Cali sent, I could rename it to you know, whatever extension, and it would still load in properly. So you, you just got to be careful when you're opening files <laughs> or downloading files or accessing files. Yeah, I, I guess this looks fine, though. OK. 
God, how do people do the pouty face? That hurts. Oh man, look at that. I'm not, I'm actually not opening my mouth at all either. Red Team Hacker have put viruses to embedded JPEGs and PNGs. A VRM file would be easy. Yeah, is, isn't it easy? You just need to open it, right? All you need to do is try to open the file and you're already compromised. But since that repo has been up for a little bit, I've reasonably, reasonably confidence. Yeah, I mean, it looks good, right? It looks fine. I think I just need to fix this as the ability to open your mouth larger than your mouth should reasonably go. Um, I guess I, I don't really know. Because I, I thought I was clamping the value. Maybe I'm not. And Wireshark when downloading things especially. Usually shows up as a UDP MZ file. I don't know. I usually just run it through some online thing and then just hope it's good enough. Yeah, I think this model is a bit too aggressive on like brow in because I'm I can tell you that my this is not well, this is maybe this is why people tell me I have resting resting bitch face is that, <laughs> maybe this is actually how I look is just just look kind of mad all the time like this is my neutral face. I don't know. <laughs> Those brows are long. They are very long brows. You know, I, my brows are actually, well, my brows are not very long, but they are, they're very tall. I have very tall brows. Because when I was in like elementary school, I remember I just like, I cut off my eyebrows because I was like, check it out. I can cut my own hair. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, my, my eyebrows grew in like extraordinarily long after that. But yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. It's all you really need for IFM stuff. And also, I think it's reasonably performance, yeah, with just these values here. I think, what happens if I take out these values? So there, there, there'll be like, well, I guess we don't need the gaze values. We just need the sets. I don't know, actually. Let's let's try that out. I'll, actually, I'm going to refill my drink. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. We yet another, I was gonna say another handle of alcohol. That, that's a lot of alcohol to be drinking with another fifth of bourbon, bourbon. All right, well, let's once more with feeling. Feroid mail, sure, send me. Then we'll bring this back over. My my left forearm is actually starting to get a bit tired. All right, so now the eyes are not tracked at all. Okay. Oh, you know what? You know what? The reason why the mouth is so large is because I was applying the mouth values twice. I think I still need to apply the gaze for the eyes, maybe. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, because what you can see here, you can see here, you can see here, 
But actually, this this is totally fine now. That's that's totally fine. Which is actually very impressive. And I think I can do something similar with Open Sea Face, but now the eyes are kind of messed up because now the blink values are all sorts of borked. So here, ba ba ba, VRM model. Yeah, th there's a lot of small things that need to be redone. Yeah, so I guess if we, if we turn off custom update. Yeah, I guess all I need to do is turn off custom update. Da, 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 da. Custom updates. Just take that out for now. It would be better to load this in as a, a very specific type of model. Well, I'll have to think about how I even want to have that loaded in. So tracking, or how how the the UX should look for that, right? Because now, right now, I just do everything via file extensions. So I, I guess I could still force that, right? I don't know. Or maybe have just like a, a special type of selector here. I don't know. Think about it. I'll think about it. Start. No, the eyes are still super messed up. Yeah, they're they're closed even lower than they should possibly be. Hmm. Well, actually, in IFM, IFM sends you the oh the right eye value and the left eye value. Uh, okay, so it doesn't give you any eye values, so that's that's fine. We should do this. Do this VRM model. Do this, and then. Let me see. How, how am I doing X values, mouth open? Let me think. Where do I get the mouth open value? Interpolation, mouth open. I guess this will still work, so we'll... Hmm. Oh, because, um, because, um, VRM has its own mouth open thing, so I need the ability to toggle this on or off. 225 and 226. Yeah, 225, yeah, these are the blink values, but I shouldn't need to do that, right? These should just work automatically. Or wait, does, hold on. Are these not IFM values? Yeah, so these should be taking care of it, but I guess there's also just the regular VRM blink values that I need to take into account. So yeah, I close right, I close left, right. That's actually kind of interesting. So which ones am I supposed to be using? Because the, there's, there's the perfect sync values, which is I blink left, I blink right. But then there's also the VRM defaults. So like I close right, I close left. So I'll, I'll think about it, I'll have to think about it. It's, it's tough, it's tough. So I, I could re-enable this, but keep the mouth data, I don't know, as standard. Can load this one back in. Yeah, actually, this loads in at about the same pace as the the reference model, I guess. That's the yeah. Okay. You know what? That actually looks pretty good. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's something messed up with how 
this stuff works. Not this stuff, this stuff works. So this mouth data stuff should only be, hmm, maybe I need to do a thing where you're able to enable or disable these values. Hmm, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. I blink, I look, I squint, all, I, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I have all the values here. I've, I've, I've pulled them out just to inspect them. And then I also have all the possible IFM values, not here, here. So these are what I'm given in no specific order, which is tough. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm fairly certain that if I were to uh, take this part out, the mouth would look a lot better. So let's, I don't know, let's just reload it. Oh, I loaded in the wrong thing. Who pinged me? Who is this? Guess I need to update then, right? Yeah. I guess I don't know. Is it, did I was IFM in the la latest play? Blah, blah, blah. Was IFM in the latest flat pack? I think it was. Probably was. I don't remember. All right. So does this look more correct? Because now I'm no longer applying. No, it's about the same. But it is using this new script here. Yep, yep, yep. Hold on. Here. Yeah, so I rotation, I do need to set myself. The blinking, uh, I'm not sure. I thought the blinking would be handled for me, but maybe that's fine. I don't know, something, something doesn't seem right about the math values there. Maybe it, it shouldn't even go to one. Maybe I should max it out at, no, I just need to make it configurable. I may have to make everything configurable though. All right, and there was a little bit of lag. Oh, oh no. Now it's very, very slow. <laughs> now, now it's very, very slow. Something happened. Something got stuck, so I'll we'll just toggle it all on and off again. Yeah, that's weird actually. Sometimes it just gets stuck. Yeah, that looks about right. Actually, I let the mouth open default and it's default super wide. I can turn, well, actually when I do, what I'm talking about is this. Can you see this? I don't know how visible that is. I can see it in my preview window, but when I open my mouth like this, Right, you can kind of see the seams around the mouth. That looks, no, no, but can you see the can you see the seam? So if I zoom in a little bit, just change the seam like this. You can see that at the bottom of the mouth. Ah, ah. There's 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 little lines at the very bottom. Yeah. Yeah, it's normal. Okay, so it's not my fault. Okay. <laughs> if it's normal, then it's not my fault. Whatever. I feel I don't feel too bad about it. Something about is is this mouth intentional? I guess I, I what I should check is on the other model actually. So presets. Can't see over my iPad. So this will kill the tracker. Takes a little bit. Start me. Uh, actually, it looks normal on this one, so that's fine. Yeah, okay. So something I need to do for perfect sync support is make it possible to toggle on uh, like the default VRM model stuff, because a lot of that was built with OpenSea face in mind. 
Yeah. Also, something that's a bit weird is I'm not moving my head at all. I'm just shifting my mouth like that. But you can kind of see the the model is kind of like wiggling his head like this. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's just like a model thing. Or like a 3D thing. Because I'm not able to... Well, no. It's kind of like moving like that. Yeah. Something else that happens sometimes is a you might you might have noticed it a few minutes ago, where I had to toggle on and off the tracking. Uh, I don't really know what happened. Something something got stuck, and then the tracking became delayed by like a full half second. Like right now, it's pretty fast. I'm not really sure how to reproduce the the error though. So no. Yeah, I guess if everything looks good on the reference model, I'll, it's fine. If it looks good, so the, the math looks fine, I just need a way to toggle on and off. Oh, oh geez. Let's drop my iPad off my, <laughs> my desk. As long as everything looks good on this model, whatever. Blend it on the ping. Yeah, ping time over DNS. Well, is it ping? Because, like, right now there's almost no latency. Like, for me, I. If I talk with a really exaggerated mouth, like I can't really talk that <laughs> like that. Like you, you can see it matches up, but there was also a time a few minutes ago where it was delayed by about half a second. Like if something got stuck, I saw the entire thing lag for like a second, and then it became super offset, which was only fixed by toggling on and off the tracking. So I, I don't really know. And then, it, of course, it's really easy to do this, right? <laughs> Device wasn't expecting to send receive data and it's delayed creating higher ping? Maybe. I don't know. Do you have a, do you have a solution? <laughs> or do you know what to look for? Or at least how to even reproduce it? I don't know. No, it looks pretty good, though. It looks pretty good. I guess for these values, yeah, I don't, I don't need these anymore. I only need to set the interpolation data, I guess, then for blinking. Or maybe these values should be, hmm. I, I know that all of these values tend to default to zero, which might not be right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll think about it. But this, I, this part might just have to be super specific to open C face. Don't know. So I, I, I can move things out of VRM model over to open C face, move things over to IFM. And so the only things I really need then for VRM model are for like eye rotations. And then I guess blinking, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me why I would need to do that for blinking. So is the cat mouth, this is your fault. Yeah. I was kind of wondering about the cat mouth. Kind of wondering about the cat mouth. I, I will push these changes now. I'm gonna turn off my IFM tracker. I think this looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good, or it looks good enough. Maybe not. Maybe good is a bit too, uh, a bit too generous. So resources. This is actually also not what I was planning on doing today, but here we are. Let me see. Resources extensions. I was refactoring the extensions. That's what I was doing, and I was only gonna peek at this, but I don't know. It was more fun this way, I guess. So, git with the diff. That's it. This, I, I really don't like how this works. <laughs> that just looks, that just feels bad to me. But it, it, it's reasonably fast. I, I guess I would need someone else to test it who has a, a worse computer. 
right? Because we are setting 52 blend shapes. Well, this is taking place in a thread, so that's fine. It's this logic here at the very bottom that's a lot slower, right? Because this is 52 times however many meshes you have. Because currently there's no way for me to indicate which mesh it should be setting the blend shapes on because I only know which bone is your head bone. I don't know which mesh is your head mesh. I have the bad computer. Oh, there we go. Then you can go through the setup instructions. Because I, I do I did get a complaint <laughs> by this person. Pasqui Pasqui. He was saying it's too complicated. That shit might be, unfortunately. I guess if, if you only want to run it in test mode, you only need to do steps one through four. And then even then, it's not really four steps, it's more like two steps, which is like, or three steps, which is download a pre-compiled binary. I think the pre-compiled binary is up to date, it might not be. Yeah, it's very complicated for new people. That, yeah, it's true, that's true. It's true. It is fairly complicated. Unfortunately, but I, there's not too much I can do about that, honestly. I mean, uh, I, well, I would hope that the, the steps, <laughs> the, there's a reason why I numbered the steps is that you just follow each step, right? It's nothing like, um, you know, building media pipe, which is like, here's steps zero through, you know, 10, but then some of these steps are optional and then some of these steps need to be modified <laughs> depending on which version of OpenCV you have. And if you have OpenCV version four, then you need to modify these files. It's like, what, what are we talking about? And then Bazel is like a completely separate step. And it's, oh no. And then because Bazel has its own dependencies. So I didn't think it was too complicated, but I, I can see how this would be too complicated. All right, let's, let's just send this for now. Get status, get make a five hour crash course on compiling Linux and Godot, and you have to link it in the readme. Oh yeah, just make a really long one. All right, check this out, Doc. Long time viewer, check this out. So we'll, we'll use Kali's or Demuriel's model here with the cat mouth. Check this out. So we have IFM. We'll start tracking. Just gotta hold my iPad in front of my face. Open up iFacial mocap. Do this. <laughs> Doing that face. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't look right. It's all about that. Trying to not to swear at all the bugs on stream. Yeah, well, that's kind of like the painful part of the stream. What people actually want to see, what gets you the, the big views is things like this. It's like, oh, it just works. How does it just work? How am I so smart? It's not as if I prepared the entire code beforehand and then just pretended to figure out the solutions on stream, hint, hint. Uh, yeah. I guess single puff doesn't really work. I, I Puff cheeks only works if you puff up both your cheeks. Maybe, or I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you're only able to puff out your cheeks if you purse your mouth as well. I don't know. I think this this looks pretty good though. It's just a full mouth open, but apparently that's not my fault. Something about blinking seems a bit broken to me, but don't know. Something that's kind of interesting is that this is still kind of messed up, right? So if I wink, you can see that the my remaining open eye kind of curls inwards. This is a problem that OpenCFace had as well. 
And that, that, that might just be like a 3D model thing. I'm not sure. Because I can see in the eye facial mocap preview that, that my, my eye is still looking in the correct direction. I think. Or maybe maybe I'm just crazy and I'm actually going like super cross-eyed. You know, wink. <laughs> wink. Yeah. But apparently this mouth, this the weird U-shaped mouse is all mouth is not my fault either. Because on the other actual reference model that apparently Hannah, Hana, Hana tool uses. Need to look over this. Waiting for it. Tracking. Yeah, see that looks right. Yeah, oh actually tongue out works better on this model as well. It's kind of it's kind of buggy though. But probably because eye facial mocap doesn't track it very well either. Because I just don't maybe I just have like a, a short tongue. Feels bad, man. <laughs> You know what they say about short dudes, short tongues. <sighs> yeah. Um, try tongue out, but with mouth closed. All right, let's, all right. All right, we'll, we'll try it again. Let's we'll try it again. You can kind of hear, I don't know if you can hear that, but my computer fan spins up to a high degree when doing this tracking stuff. My iPad's also starting to get pretty hot. I'll, I'll defer to the experts who know what they're talking about. So you want tongue out but mouth closed. It's not working. Maybe, maybe I need to do the open C face thing where we rotate. Do you like how the duck also follows my movements? <laughs> Fun IFM AP, APK for Android. Pog. All right, so mouth closed, tongue out. It did not pretty much ever I did about that. Duck face mocap when? What's what's um, what was it called? That at least back when I was still in school, was it called duck face? This is duck face. This doesn't really look like duck face though. This is more just like me pouting. <laughs> Uh, this is pretty close to my face, though, yeah. You, you get a lot more expression, for sure. And I guess what you could do, right, something that other programs may or may not have is that I can actually press... Maybe I can't. <laughs> maybe I can't do that. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I can't offset it. Maybe, okay, I think I need to do the offsets in a separate way if I want to offset it. That's fine, though. Yeah, the... The tongue out doesn't really work. Pout, duck face and pouts is really close. One looks cute, maybe what makes you look like an idiot? Well, it, no, isn't. I've, I've, I've had it explained to me on this stream that pouting is, like duck face is just kissy face, right? Like, oh, hold on. Like, duck face is just kissy face, and then pouting is like, look at that. You puff out your cheeks. I didn't realize it, but yeah, that makes sense. Actually, yeah, and I should have tested this previously when I was doing the dish thing. The mouth would open without me opening it, but now, look at that. <laughs> that also looks pretty weird. <coughs> Sorry. Moving all that mouth, or moving all the air in my mouth around from cheek to cheek. It's not the, doesn't feel great. Anyways, I'm gonna push that code. 
Oh, that's not how you do it. Git commits. Um, implements perfect sync blend shapes. So I'll push that. All right, hold on. Cancel, cancel. So git push, or what, what's, what remotes do I have? Git. I only have the HTTPS, huh? All right, I can find it. So, switch the scene just so you can see what I'm doing. Well, I finally started trying to use Bevy seriously. It's so strange trying to do everything with systems. Oh yeah, see that's something I didn't really get. And the, the other thing is that you need to load, or at least from what I understand, is that you need to load all of your systems in at the start. If you want to have like different screens, so you need to load in like your, your title screen, like the, the system for your title screen, you need to load in the system for your like your main game or something, or is that what you would use a sub world for? I, that's the, like the last thing I need in order to understand what the heck is going on. It's like, how, how do you load in systems for like different screens? If you think, uh, or maybe I'm just thinking about how Bevy does it completely incorrectly. I'm using states. Yeah, well, you still need to load in the system for, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that, that's how you switch between the different screens, but then how do you like handle loading in screens to begin with, right? Like I, the way that Godot does it makes sense to me is that you just kind of destroy everything in your scene tree and then load in the different screen. But then how do you load in different screens in Bevy? Do you just, or is like registering each system not actually loading it in in Bevy? You just need to register it at the very start. Or maybe that's how you do it. Or maybe that's what you would use a subworld for. I don't know. That's something I, I still don't really understand. Not really sure what you mean. Well, see, you have, well, because if you, you have your, so say you have two screens, right? Or three screens, you have your title screen, you have your, your game screen, and you have your pause screen. So of course you start in like the, the pause screen states. And then when you want to switch, you switch your state to your, uh, your game screen. And then if you want to pause, you switch state to your, your pause state. But then, at, when, when you're setting up your Bevy game, right, you need to register your, you know, your, your title screen system, your, your game screen system, your pause screen system, presumably, so you can actually switch between your system, right? And, or I guess they're not specific systems, maybe they're bundles, right? So is, is that how you would do it? Is that you would just need to register everything at the very, very start? Or could you do something, do it like how Godot does it? And then just, you know, you load it on demand. Like a lot of this stuff is not registered with Godot. Like all the, all the tracker stuff is all loaded on demand. So Godot actually is not able to provide any debugging information about the, the trackers especially at runtime. It just kind of assumes that the script is there, right? Whereas in Bevy, it feels like you need to register everything at the very start of your application. Or, or am I understanding that wrong? Adding systems is just calling a function? Yeah, yeah, but how do you, but you're not able to remove systems, right? And Bevy? So yeah, I think at pretty much any point you can remove a system. Or no, you can add a system, but you can't remove it, which means like what happens? Is it, is it just kind of stored in memory for forever? So the actual scene you do an on enter system? Yeah, yeah. All right, so I guess like you would, you would, yeah, I, well, no, I, I still don't really understand. Like what happens when you want to get rid of the system then? <laughs> Like I, like, I don't need the system to be hanging out anymore. You can't add remove systems as far as I know, but you, you just don't run the system using the run criteria, but isn't that kind of slow? 
Well, maybe that maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe that's just a micro optimization. Is that like, you just bail out immediately? Get def. Okay. I guess that's fine. Yeah, I doubt it's slow. Okay. Maybe maybe that's yeah, maybe it's just a micro optimization. But that that was the big thing for me is like I'm I'm still stuck on the concept of moving from screen to screen. Like everything else in Bevy makes sense to me, right? Like I, I get it, right? You do the you do uh, scene switching or screen switching via states, but like how do you, how do, what happens to your screens though? <laughs> Where do they go? Get commit store blend VRM blend shapes. Or I guess it's not store in them. It's I guess find VRM blend shapes when loading in VRM models updates IFM. Something like that. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Maybe I have a schedule to optimize it, so I just, just trust the engine at that point. All right, that's fine. Fair enough. I guess if, the, if Bevy has its own scheduler, that, that's the part I was confused about, <laughs> is if there is a scheduler, then OK, sure. <laughs> it's not just running through every single system that you register, right, to, I guess, further explain myself, right? The Bevy, 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 Bevy. Where is it? All right, bevy, GitHub. The count is on their way. Are they on their way? Because I'm about to be done. <laughs> They're late. Hold on. I remember looking at one of these and I was very confused about how it works. Is it, maybe it's just 2D? No, all of these examples are single screen applications. I'm, where, where, where were the results of the last bevy jam? And then I can actually explain myself games I don't know I, I'm pretty sure all of these are all single screen games and then they do all the where's main 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 no maybe not or maybe a setup is it yeah sure Insert resource, com no, this is setup. Isn't this just the system? Spawn bundle, yeah, no, this is a setup system. Eh? Oh, here, yeah. So this is what I'm talking about, Nock, about the bevy thing, is that if you want to add in your systems, you need to add in, you had to add everything here. Like, of course, you could just add stuff dynamically, I guess. And then you would have some sort of states. Um, you define some sort of state somewhere here as well. And then you can flip between system sets, et cetera, et cetera. But then how do you add systems dynamically? That's, that's the question. <laughs> but I, I guess if the scheduler keeps track of all that, then the whatever. Check the game menu example. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you have your plugin, you have your menu, and your game plugin. Yeah, and then these plugins have to be defined somewhere, right? Yeah. And then they have a system set. Yeah, yeah. See, I understand how this works. Oh, despawn screen. Is this like a special thing? Super. Oh, OK. Is this new? Or have I just missed that? OK. You know what? That makes sense. You know what? Maybe I just missed this. That makes a lot more sense. That makes more sense. If that's how that works, that makes a lot of sense. Is that you need to, yeah. Okay. That answers a lot of my questions. Is it at the bottom? Commands entity, no, that's not actually not. Mm. Entities with that components. That's not really what I was talking about then, but sure. <laughs> oh, I guess, you know what? It's it's deleting all entities with this components. Uh, okay, I think I get it. 
but then you just kind of have all these things hanging out at all times, right? But it doesn't matter. So they are stored in memory, kind of, maybe. But the scheduler handles the, the memory for you anyways. OK. That makes sense. All right, I, I will show this off one, one last time, by the way. Just for you, Jordan. Check this out. Because I know that you were asking for this for a while. So look at the one that Kali sent. Just got to load everything back in. Start tracking. So you can start looking. Look at that. OK. Yeah, the default screen is user defined. Yeah, so I'm not crazy for the bevy stuff, but it, I, I guess I do see what it's doing is that it's deleting all components with a specific tag. Uh, but the systems still have to be loaded all in at the start, but presumably you should be able to add systems at runtime if you want, but I, it doesn't really matter. And you don't need to unload systems, that's fine. Each system is just a pointer, yeah. That makes sense. Oh yeah. This, this is what I have, Jordan. My mouth hurts from having to do mouth exercises for like an hour. <laughs> so you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Tongue out doesn't really work, but it's not, that's not really my program's fault. That's, I blame IFM, because IFM also struggles with seeing my tongue. Ah, ah. It's only if I do like that, you can see it. Yeah, so you can do this, you can puff, you can do this. <laughs> Still makes me laugh every time. You can do angry pouts. Yeah. IFM has tongue, yeah. Sounds like a problem with your tongue. It might be a problem with my tongue. And then I was saying, you know, they, you know that they say about small feet, small tongue. Well, actually, if I do it, like, if I, if I tilt my head up, maybe it's just because, like, the angle of the camera that's not able to see it. Ah, yeah. It might, it might just be the angle of the camera. Yeah, yeah that, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. It works for the most part. There's a few changes that still need to be made on the VRM side, because I think there's still a lot of... Uh, some old stuff from OpenSea Face GD. So the, with OpenSea Face, you, it only gives you raw values, whereas IFM gives you actual blend shapes, which is a lot easier to work with. So, like a lot of the math stuff needs to needed to be disabled for VRM, but whatever. I didn't know how to puff cheeks. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't realize that like pouting was puffing your cheeks. I don't know. I thought pouting was more like a like a duck face. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really pout. I'm not. I'm not an anime girl. I mean, right now I am an anime girl and also a duck at the same time. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you get the nice whatever's. The, there's only one bug, whereas um, where there's one obvious bug that I've seen, which is sometimes. The, the entire application will hang, and then uh, tracking will be like delayed by half a second until I toggle on and off tracking. Yeah, duck anime, anime duck girl. Well, I don't know. Jordan, do you want a commission? <laughs> make make an anime duck girl. <laughs> yeah, Subaru. I think I do have a Subaru. I had a rigged Subaru model at some point. Commission you, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see about it. That would be, that'd be pretty cool, actually. Like a like a perfect synced duck. But honestly, I'm probably not going to be using perfect sync. But it, it would be nice to have as a as an example because these perfect sync models do look pretty good. Yeah, it's it's pretty accurate, and also like the the actual head tracking is based off of the the raw tracking data, so it's it's easier to work with. Yeah, yeah see, this one looks good. I, I guess that's actually real pouting, right? I don't, I don't, I I, I do this a lot. It's it's just hard for you to see. 
on the normal model. <laughs> I, I never ever puff out my my cheeks though. That's weird. It hurts. The duck dog croak, Cronenberg is still like yeah. The duck dog, one hundred percent. Duck dog is pretty goaded. But yeah, all this stuff is pushed. So I guess if you have it in you to build this stuff yourself. It hurts. It, it does hurt, man. Don't make it weird. <laughs> Don't make it weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the latest stuff is up there. There's also the mouse tracker, which works as it always does. I still need to think about how to do all of these things running at the same time, because you can run more than one at the same time. I think I just need to have options inside of all of these. So like if you want to pass along, uh, you know, like mouth tracking data, or you only want to use eye facial mocap for the mouth tracking, you want to use open C face, or you, you don't want to use eye tracking from eye facial mocap, you only want to use mouth tracking or blend shapes, whatever. And you want to use open C face for eye tracking. Cause I think open C face might be a little bit better. Hard to say. Or maybe you only want to use the mouse tracker for this, which could be a bit cooler because then your character actually moves in response to the mouse. Try making something this weekend, but I'll probably wait until Oro updates the flat pack. Fair enough, fair enough. Something I do really need to do is update the this thing. I need I need to make the workflow for it. So there's the there's a test workflow that happens on every single push, and then there's also the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's the deploy workflow. Cause I did do the deploy workflow for open C face here. I don't, I don't think she's ever run it. <laughs> Cause you can see here. Yeah. There's nothing in the, <laughs> nothing here, but I have it on my fork. And so now that this, now that this is done, I can start packaging open C face or not open C face V pupper properly via CI because there's a ton of things there's a ton of dependencies unfortunately because uh, the this thing IFM has no dependencies it's just connecting to your device uh, open C face has a dependency on open C face of course because that needs to be packaged properly and then mouse tracker is just rust right and so I, I know that there's a few Rust things, a few Docker images or whatever. I'll, I'll see what the, the people for Bevy were doing because I know that there is like a Bevy workflow. And so I, I can probably just piggyback off probably their Docker image. Just rebuild all your dependencies yourself. Yeah, well. <laughs> I, that, that's kind of what I'm doing, honestly. That's kind of what I'm, I already, I, I did it for open C face and then contributed back to upstream like a good open source contributor. Uh, mouse tracker, I can probably do that. It's not so hard. Because uh, I think you can just download Rust up via the shell scripts. It's kind of wasteful, but whatever. <laughs> it would be better to use the Docker container though. And then IFM is, as I said, it's very, very simple. I, well, not this one. IFM, IFM, IFM. It's, it's somewhere. Somewhere here. Yeah. I, IFM is just this, which is a UDP server. But yeah. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be live. What is today? Thursday? I'll be live Sunday for sure. Well, most likely. We'll, we'll give it a 75%. We'll be live Sunday, unless I'm doing something else. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Let me see. I found a project that uses Node 12. Isn't that like really, really old? <laughs> yeah, thanks for hopping by, Nock. Much appreciated. And thanks everyone else for stopping by. Nero, uh, whoever else, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> There's Callie in there somewhere. Or uh, bad with names. Anyways, Discord, if you want to go here. Seven years old? Is it, is it like a modern project? There is a Discord, there's a GitHub. 
just need time to catch the end. Yeah. Oh, my bot's dead. Okay. Well, that's fine. Rare Shell Puppet Project, you want to check out whatever's. There's releases provided under releases, who would have guessed, uh, for Windows and Linux. So there's also a flat pack or whatnot. Uh, yeah, let's find somebody to raid, I guess. Who else is doing good do? Since there are actual people here. There's Choto. Let me see. Oh, we can, we can, we can, we can raid Wyatt, if I can grab their name. It's a little difficult. Hold on, don't, don't play it. Ah. That's why it's deleted and yeeted. Ear end is live. We can also raid ear end. Uh, how do I do raids again? Raid ear end. I'm gonna hope you spelled it right. I'm assuming they're doing good deal. Get ready to get sense. Or is it only two? Or there, there, there's some ears. Unfortunately, <laughs> I have too much pride to raid with less than three. He's not there though. Is he not there? We can cancel the raid and we can raid somebody else. <laughs> you baited me. Get canceled. We'll, we'll raid this person instead. Because they're also doing good deal. And I, I just checked and they're there. Still starting my pattern check. I... You've just made an enemy for life. Oh yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll be live Sunday. Uh, check out all my stuff on GitHub. Give me stars, please. And anyways, goodbye.